All right, everybody, we are back on Skywatchers Radio right here on the Dark Matter Radio Network and, of course, PSN Radio. We're joined now with Mr. Stephen Bassett. And, Stephen, uh, you were on with us earlier this month. It unfortunately, was on much sadder times when we had uh, just the passing of Lloyd Pye. Uh, now, of course, we want to get an update on what's going on with you and what you're working on. And uh, just a quick overall update on what everything's happening in your world. Well, I am. Uh... First, I have some more sad news. Oh, we just lost another researcher activist. Uh, oh, okay. Out, uh, an hour ago, uh, Elaine Douglas, um, a pioneer, really, uh, was in 25 years in MUFON, one of the original people with the Operation Right to Know, did some early activism in the early 1990s before I even came on board, one of the few to ever march in front of the White House on this issue. And she created the Journal for abduction counter research jar uh, really 30 God, I don't know 35 years of engaging this issue it just passed of cancer so uh, again I, I'm very sad that Elaine did not see the resolution of this issue in uh, in her lifetime I, I remember Elaine things, she, she was on Jerry Pippen's show a while back wasn't she I remember hearing her show yeah sure yeah she's done media over the years yeah yeah uh uh, many times. Um, oh, so, yeah, it is. Uh, we're going to lose more. The truth embargo is 67 years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's that's how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're trying to outlive us all. Uh, like the Soviet Union outlived an awful lot of people. Never got to see the end of that fiasco of a government. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll be out of this soon. Uh, referring to the truth embargo. Um, a number of things. One, I'm about to send out an update to the main PRG list. Uh, due to the bad weather, bad politics, and funding issues, the, the launch of the congressional initiative to get hearings uh, on Capitol Hill for the, the scores of witnesses that are ready to testify, we've discussed, has now been rescheduled to March 31. Okay. And that date is firm. Okay. That's it. So, so that's the day that we're going to ship the DVD sets out to the U.S. Congress uh, and then um, and start a full-fledged go to public campaign to get people to contact them and, and to, 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 to look at these DVDs, look at the material, look at this citizen hearing on disclosure material. And meet with me. I'll be probably arriving in DC. I'll be arriving up on Capitol Hill uh, about. Hmm, I'm going to guess around April 8. Uh, and making the. I say arrive in Capitol Hill. I'll be I'll be contacting the Capitol Hill offices with requests to meet, right, with okay. the chiefs of staff to talk about the content of those of of the citizen hearing and why we need Capitol Hill hearings right away. So that's important. That's that's an announcement that I'm about to get out, and um, that, of course, is the what we've been aiming for now. The PRG has been aiming for many, many years. There are enough witnesses ready to testify of sufficiently high rank and station that if they are in front of committees on the Hill with cameras, obviously covering it, there'll be a lot of that. Uh, the truth embargo will will probably be over within a short amount of time. Uh, maybe a month, if that, because they, there's just no way that the media will be able to stand down after that. The media will just go nuts, and uh, that's it. And I think the government will know that, probably even uh, before necessarily a thousand reporters turn up at their door and might then move uh, practically to to end the truth embargo um, right then and there. So. That's the game plan. And, and, and that's why there's been no hearing since 1968. Uh, the smart people inside military intelligence know that those hearings could not take place. They had a short hearing that was a legitimate hearing, but it was not really intended to resolve anything in 68. And then that was it. They shut everything down, and it was like nothing nothing to do anymore. Just go away. Uh, shut down Blue Book and uh, you know, just you know, destroyed NICAP and thought they were pretty much free of it for a good while. And they were, uh, but about uh, nine years after the shutdown of Blue Book is when Stan Friedman and and uh, Jesse Marcel Sr. came together. Right. Stan interviewed him, and yep. the whole Roswell story starts 
uh, up for real. Right, it starts evolving uh, again. from there, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and uh, really, it was the Roswell story, and of course, Jesse's uh, uh, coming forward and telling the truth, which he decided to do late in life, retired, and with cancer. Uh, probably shouldn't have. I mean, it was probably against some of some national, you know, some security arrangement he had, but he didn't care. And uh, once, and it was the Roswell inf- information coming out there in in, in sixty nine that just kept this, it got this issue back into play permanently. And of course, Roswell then goes on to become a legend, a legendary event, legendary place, a focus for public interest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And off we go. So uh, the hearing last year was 68. Now we need to have the real deal, the real hearings. Um, and uh, my intent is to go back to D.C. and, and get them. Stephen, you know, the more I think about it, the more I, I just I concentrate on what's been going on on the last few months, especially with uh, Podesta uh, joining Obama's, uh, you know, team. To me, they're almost like getting ready for the announcement at this point, I think. Well, from our perspective, you really have to wonder about that. Yeah. I, I just could not think of a, of a, a standard explanation for bringing uh, Podesta into the administration on a consulting basis. I just couldn't see it. Um, there's just it's, he's 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 completely embroiled with running the Center for American Progress. Right. He's obviously able to contribute policy stuff to the Democrats at will. Uh, he's got a whole think tank capable of producing policy. Why? What, what is? Why would you bring Obama in? I mean, Podesta in to the administration in a sense, in a formal way, uh, to get his advice. It just didn't make any sense, except in one instance, for sure. If Obama was going to use Podesta as the liaison to cut the deal with the military intelligence that allows for disclosure to take place it would be very awkward if he was not working for the White House, as opposed to simply being a civilian, being asked to come in and what, negotiate with some big shots in the military intelligence community? Right. So when you work for the White House, you have certain um, protections. Obviously, you're, you're, you're back under full security oath and so forth. When you're just a civilian citizen being asked, well, can you come help out? And so the formality of bringing him on board fits nicely into that scenario. But there may be another scenario that I have no idea about. But then, of course, I know Podesta's history here. I know the history of the Clinton administration. Now, most people don't. The vast, vast majority, 98% of all the American people, do not know the history of Podesta in this issue or the Clinton administration in this issue. But there are people that do, including you, including me. And, and, and we look at this and go, this is very interesting. I hope it's true. I mean, I haven't made a big deal out of it. I mean, I haven't really been, uh, I haven't sent any press releases. I'm not really pounding the drums on this because I, I don't want to make it harder for them. I, if that is intent, that is their intent, I want to give them some m- m- breathing space to, to possibly put that together. If you draw tons and tons of attention to it, then it might uh, make it uh, more difficult for him t- uh, to be used in that way. Uh, I do find it funny though. A lot of uh, websites have been really just uh, focusing on that aspect of, of Podesta and uh, the fact that he's interested in the UFO subject, as far as his being appointed to uh, to Obama's team. I, I I find it really funny. They're just that's one thing they keep reporting on. You know what I mean? Well, I mean that's 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 interesting. That, and certainly the websites that deal with this issue, that's what they're going to report on. If you look at the news, they they don't make that connection at all. So no, but even Huffington Post, uh, even Huffington Post made a mention of it. Which... There was, no, I just say not at all. That's not true. There, there was a, actually a mention in uh, a sort of a, a reference in an article in the Washington right. Post. Um, it was again done in tongue in cheek, though what they said was true. So they they brought it out, but they didn't certainly focus on it in the kind of serious way that would attract the attention of. Of uh, other editors, pushers, and what have you. Again, playing the game, the dance of the truth in Barco. It's a it's a wonderful dance. No, no. Um, you said that Washington Post. I, and while I didn't know about that one, I was talking about the Huffington Post. 
uh, HuffingtonPost.com, uh, which is a very well-known political website also. They even reported that new Obama advisor John Podesta is an advocate for UFO disclosure. That was how they reported when he first joined the team, which I thought yeah. was really I think, I think I think the, post, the Washington thing ran a, Washington ran a post about ten, four reasons or ten reasons why oh, a president may not want to see you know John Podesta show up at the White House. But um, overall, it's simply not out there in a significant way, uh, and that may be a good thing. So I'm not I'm not contributing to pushing this right now. Um, I've uh, certainly talked about Podesta's role in this, going back to the administration countless times. But now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Uh, as I said, uh, disclosure is close, um, and I, I, we're, we're looking for every everything, every indication indication uh, that that uh, might turn up. Uh, always checking any any uh, particular event to see is that an indicator or not. Uh, the Podesta thing, which is Obvious. I mean, it was right. just very obvious. There's been some disinformation stuff lately that I've noted, um, mm-hmm. but you know, uh, not a huge amount. But there's been some some things of interest. Um, if if we're really getting close to disclosure, there'll be more, right? And we'll be watching for those. Um, but close to disclosure is one thing. Disclosure is another. Uh, there are just too many people. I think. Of influence inside government that could block it. Any one of them can could block it uh, if it were getting close. So we have to keep the pressure people on and people. On. And, the, and the, the congressional hearings is the ultimate pressure. Now, do you think that once we uh, come around March and we we have the hearing, um, how long do you think do you think it's going to be a, a few days or a month after or a couple of weeks after that? The government is going to make a move and say something. How soon do you think it's going to happen? Well, we launched the Congressional Hearing Initiative March 31. Right. That is an attempt to get a committee, at least one in committee in Congress, House, or Senate, to agree to take testimony from a range of witnesses, not just one or two, but many. Uh, and when that will, I, I'd like to see it in 90 days. Uh, I'm going to give it a full, intense 90 days, and then see where we're at after that. But uh, I, I, I want to get it right away. Now, let's say that it all goes pretty well, and a committee agrees to to conduct the hearings. They can be put together very quickly when they right. want to. Like on Benghazi, right? I mean, they they were having hearings on Benghazi within weeks. Uh, and they still are having it. So when they, when they want to have hearings, they can have hearings. There's, 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 you don't need a lot of ramp up. Right. People have to be notified. They're going to fly into Washington. They're going to put in hotels. Uh, they're given a schedule, one to testify. Sometimes there's a advanced um, uh, testimony that takes place behind uh, closed doors. Then they go in front of the cameras in the chamber, uh, in one of the house hearing rooms, and so forth. So we very quickly, if the hearings get underway for the kinds of witnesses that I will insist on, um, I believe the media will probably go into some sort of frenzy within four or five days, tops. And then once that starts, uh, what happens is the, the, the media sort of uh, cuts the, the shackles off their legs and is able to move away from the radiator a little bit more. Um, and start asking questions, and they, 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 there's a whole range of questions that could and should be asked of a whole range of people. And if those questions actually start getting publicly asked, the people involved will know the jig is up. Now, are you getting, what, no what kind of feedback? Of what, what kind of feedback are you getting from like other countries concerning the uh, the, the hearing on March? Well, we got we got feedback from all over the world. It's very positive. In fact, we need to publish that. I have a whole bunch of feedback, tremendous feedback from people around the world. It's all positive. It's great. Uh, I, the, the citizen hearing on disclosure got the strongest response to anything I've ever seen mm. is taking place regarding this issue of an advocacy type um, that I'm aware of. It was a game changer, and it's still very powerful. And, and it's, things have slowed down. Our funding ran out. We need to find more. Uh, so it slowed things down. It's been almost six months, 
or it has oh, it's been more than six months. It's been seven months. It's been that month. But uh, soon the DVD sets will be done, and they're going to be out, and they're going to be we're going to be uh, marketing those all over the world. And of course, we're going to be sending to Congress the 100 UN rep, uh, ambassadors, 100 US ambassadors, um, and it'll all be back in play very quickly. So it's not going anywhere. And of course, there are pieces of the hearing all over the internet. Right. So uh, you know, and we haven't lost any witnesses. Um, well, that's not true. We lost one. We lost Jesse Marcel Jr. Correct. Yeah. Uh, after that hearing, uh, which definitely hurt um, a lot. Um, but none other, none, none other than Jesse so far. Uh, and again, uh, uh, hopefully there'll be no more losses between now and in the spring. Uh, so, but we have, you know, there's more than enough witnesses to fill hearings for weeks. Uh, you know, but that, yeah, that brings up a, a good question, though, uh, Steve, real quick, not to yeah. get you off, but that brings up a good question. Uh, you know, witnesses of Jesse Marceau Jr.'s age are, you know, they, they are getting older, and as they get older, people are, you know, do eventually pass away. Uh, is there a possibility that the government could, you know, hold out, even though you have the hearing, and not say anything and just wait it out until most of the, these witnesses have passed away in the next, I don't know, 5, no. 10, 15 years? No, because... Once I mean, this this will be. Fine. I mean, it'll be without a doubt. Uh, this is going to blow the the cover off the whole thing. This hearing, it is. It does once the witnesses start testifying on the hill under oath, which is Pensley of perjury, federal, serious. Right. Mm, These right. people, they, 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 the Washington Post and other uh, entities that have <clears throat> been servicing the truth embargo for years. Um, they've been able, able to sort of ignore this. Uh, they're, if, they, if they're part of press conferences, it's just a press conference. They can ignore right. it. When we had the citizen hearing on disclosure, it was a little harder to ignore. And, of course, it created, I think, quite a splash. Correct. But, yeah, yeah, they were able to stand down afterwards. But when they turn up on the Hill in front of actual committees, right, with the level of public and, and media interest that will be in the hearing itself, uh, and that testimony start to be heard, by people all over the world, the media is going to realize that this is the biggest news story in history, and that's it. They're just they're going to be unchained, and that's the, that's uh, so. It doesn't matter whether once that testimony is up there, it's filmed, it's in the can, it's history. So what happens to the witnesses after that is uh, not a factor. Uh, the media will close the deal by putting the government in a position where it absolutely has no choice but to disclose. What are the government's uh, line of defense is like? Well, we're going to investigate these claims and uh, see how how much you know truth is, there is behind all these claims these people are making. And they launch some sort of investigation without really conceding that there's any truth to it yet. I could try. <laughs> I could try, but there's already a host of questions. Right. About well, it, it's kind of like it's like the whole steroids. Be, they're it's like the whole to steroids. Thing. And after the fifty fifth time, they say, "Well, we'll look right. into that." Then the media is going to get even matter, right? And 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 again, when, once the media goes into feeding frenzy, there is just no force on earth that can stop it. Well, the, the reason I say that is it's like the whole baseball thing with uh, steroids, for example. I mean, there was uh, committee hearings, people testified, and then there were trials and all kinds of things that came after that where they launched investigations. Uh, that mm -hmm. could possibly happen here where there could be uh, some kind of investigation launch uh, to try to figure out if there's any truth to any of these things or any of these stories. Again, aside from the fact that there's mountains more evidence for the ET presence than there are the steroid thing, aside from the fact that <laughs> the ET point. issue is 10,000 times more important than the steroid thing, um, the analogy would hold, but obviously that's not the case. This is the kind of thing that... So you're, just, you're definitely, so you're definitely I mean, I'll be, able to, I'll, I mean I'll be able to go on radio shows and literally feed the media the questions they need to ask. I just go on radio television and say, hey, ask this person of that, and ask that person this. And there's just no way out. I mean, the person can say, well, I'll, I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Well, we've, got, we've got too much evidence about their connection to the issue already. And so they're all going to come off looking like complete and total liars, and everything will go downhill. So, every, and so what's going to happen is you're going to have powerful people calling up the president or calling up the Pentagon and saying, for God's sakes, <laughs> Tell the truth here, because we're sinking out here, right? We're dying out here. And now we're just and who knows else is happening? <laughs> I mean, it's just this is this is you know this is a balloon. Uh, you, know, you know how the Air Force 
tried to explain Roswell as a mogul balloon. Well, let's yeah. use that analogy. This is a mogul balloon that's been adding, been, been pump, being pumped up for 60-some years. The thing is, like, massive. <laughs> All right. It's one little, if a, if a seagull flies into it, the thing's going to go. So it's just too vulnerable. Uh, it cannot withstand uh, and there, uh, the, the, you know, a media onslaught, and there's plenty of people in this town that know that. And so, once the process is underway, it's irreversible. That's interesting, um, Alan. You've been awfully quiet. You have any questions you want to ask, uh, Mr. Steve Bassett? Oh, good God! No, I'm absorbing everything he's saying, and I'm actually more than fascinated to the point where I'm just making my list, and I will be picking his brains shortly later on in the conversation. <laughs> Good man. Yeah, Steve, have you seen the, the images of the moon that we talked about earlier on the show here uh, from um, Google Images, which, which show a triangle or a rectangular object that, with lights on it, kind of similar to what was reported at the Phoenix Lights? Um, I've seen, seen it. Is, what what are your thoughts it. on that? Um, it, it originated on a website that has some credibility. It's up there, and I find it quite interesting. Um, you, you probably can pull it up on your end and, and give um, your uh, your audience some ways to search it up. But mm-hmm. the only the only thing about this story that I was a little uh, unsure about was that they were referring to very sophisticated um, equipment and, and technologies, uh, and they were talking about photographing this incoming object in deep space. And they showed a, a photo of it. Uh, and I was just, can, can they photo something that small in that in deep space and, and come up with it? Well, they, they very likely can. I mean, you know, let's face it. You know, it does, the, the, our telescopes are capable of doing particularly the space telescopes. Right. Uh, but uh, if, if if this article is true, and I encourage your listeners to go search for it, object on the moon, something like that, will get it. Um, Actually, uh, making it, it hasn't easier been picked for up by the mainstream yet. But if it, it, if it is true and 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 it's supportable, this is a big big deal. This could be a very significant uh, issue. Real quick, just to make it easy on the audience listening in, if you guys go to facebook dot com forward slash Skywatchers Radio, that's our Facebook page. I just posted the uh, link right there, so you can actually see the object. It is a remarkable object. Now, of course, there's already people trying to debunk it, saying, "Oh, it's nothing but uh, images that were stitched together to make this mosaic, and it's just a uh, an illusion. It, uh, it's not really there." Uh, that that doesn't hold any water. We we discussed that earlier, and it really does not work for me, uh, for the simple fact that even if you're making a mosaic out of a bunch of images, they're still taking pictures of the same spot, all of them. And they're going to show you whatever object is in there, especially if there's a crater with some kind of uh, of technology there for excavating or for mining or whatever they're doing there, or whatever this object is. Uh, even if it is a bunch of layered pictures put together for a mosaic, you're still looking at something that's p- p- uh, possibly there. Well, I, I never want to underestimate the power of... of uh photoshoppers to create realistic images. I, I it never underestimate right. that. They get better and better right. every year. Oh yeah. Uh, that said, one any any artificial structure object on the moon or Mars, but let's talk about the moon, that was not put there by humans, that's the ball game. That's it. Right. That confirms not only a life outside the planet, which is a certainty, almost everybody agrees to that, but intelligent life outside the planet and intelligent life that has somehow deposited an object on our moon, uh, which completely explodes virtually every last vestige of the debunker's uh, playbook, and thus the door that opens for the full engagement of the ET evidence we have already on this planet, which is massive. So it's a big deal. Um, I'm certainly following it. Uh, There are ways to check this. Um, and other photos that have been taken in the past. There are millions of photos that have never been looked at that NASA's taken. But, oh, yeah. but, but well, I, I take that back a little bit, because this is a recent event. The implications of this story is that this is a deep space object that came in. It was lost for a while. They could not track it. They lost the ability to track it. Hmm. And then it turns up, they believe, in a crater on the moon. So this would have recently arrived there. Um, still, we can photograph that crater. It's easy enough to do. Uh, and re-photograph it. 
If there's nothing there, it doesn't prove anything, it could have left. Right. But still, this is a significant story. I'm, I'm intrigued by it, and what I read was impressive. Conclusive? No. Certain? No. Worthy of follow-up? Absolutely. And there have been other things like this going on. It, it looks, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sightings have increased, interesting oh, kinds yeah. of sightings, yeah. near misses of airplanes. It's like, it's like, you know, think, of, think of the planet right now, the biosphere of the planet, the, the living area of the planet. It's like a shopping mall. And uh, at 6 in the morning, there's not a lot going on. By 8, things start to pick up, right? And then by 11, it's getting really intense. And then as you go later in the day, the mall just gets busier and busier and busier. Well, that's kind of like what's been happening the last 20 years and certainly the last 10 years is that there's just more and more and more things happening, uh, meaning that there's just more activity, meaning that there's something going on here. Now, in the case of the mall, you know what it is. People are now able to, they're coming to shop, and it's later in the day, they can get away, and they're all going to the mall to shop. Okay, what explains all this activity in our, in our biosphere, well, potentially rated DTs? Uh, I have a theory, and that's that we're headed towards disclosure, and disclosure leads to contact. But um, clearly, all this activity is, <laughs> is making it tough on the truth embargo. Oh, no kidding. Man, uh, even on, even on a Mars. Even on the truth embargo right now. Even on a Mars, there was recently that picture with the, uh, the, the, the rock that just showed up in front of the rover. Yeah, that's an example. Who knows what it is? There's several possibilities. But notice... Something like that's got a lot of people's attention. Why? Uh, it's just a rock, right? Who cares? Right. Because it has implications of life on right. Mars, past or present. So people fix on it. Every little thing like that is going to be picked up on. Um, yeah, so, absolutely right. Yep. Uh, again, the truth embargo, very vulnerable, uh, ready to go. We need to finish it off. March 31st is set in stone as the day... That's the day that the Citizen Hearing Initiative is launched. Launched, The initiative right. is to get the hearings in Congress. Right, right. Okay, so how, how long after that are we going to actually have the, the actual hearings? Exactly. And, and I'm, I'm hoping to get them within 90 days or less. Okay. We're going to give it our best shot. We're going to throw everything at it we can. Um, I'm still on raising the funding to be able to drive this process as fast as possible, as hard as possible. Um, and if we succeed, we'll get the hearings within 90 days. And if we get hearings and, and the witnesses that are available, are permitted, well, are included, which they will be, that's it. I'm pretty sure that the truth embargo will not last much, much, much longer after that. Well, the reason I bring that up is, again, I'm being asked uh, here in in private about it, if that's when it's going to start off. And, yeah, there you go. It's going to kick off on March 31st, and uh, it could be 90 days before we actually uh, have the official hearings take place. Uh, and, again, uh, now, Stephen, you know, once the hearings, uh, once we actually get confirmation that there are going to be uh, hearings and when people are going to be able to testify and, and everything is is done and under wraps and the government does crumble and say, okay, yeah, it's true, uh, you know, what do you expect uh, the level of, of craziness to be like with the media over this subject. Because I know there's a lot of people that are into the subject of aliens and UFOs within the media, but do you think it's going to be one of those things where it's going to be like 24 hours a day coverage all over the media? Yeah. you think they're just going to run with it 24 hours a day, 24-7? Nothing about It will be 24-7 for weeks, maybe a month, maybe longer. It will literally dominate the news across the board, everywhere, worldwide, for many weeks. Um, I mean, there'll be other stuff will be mentioned and covered, but they'll constantly come back to it. So it'll be incredibly intense, which is, and, and that's a good thing, because obviously if everybody around the world is watching news uh, shows, Europe, North America, South America, everywhere, and they're not they're not uh, in learning and and trying to find out what's going on. That's got them pretty much focused on on the uh, the process of of uh, revelation, as opposed to walking around in a daze, uh, feeling very anxious about their future or what's going to happen. So that will help to keep things kind of calm. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, what's really bad is when the government says, 
something really, really incredible has happened, uh, but we can't tell you about it for another year uh, <laughs> or whatever. I mean, that's, that's not good. Um, uh, or just in general, if something happens and there's no explanations for it coming. That's when people get upset. That's not be the case here. Um, the media will be sure that we'll have all of the ET-related, um, uh, how would you say, uh, coverage of one form or another for many, many weeks. And this will be the, the uh, I guess you could say, the decompression process um, that will get things kind of stable. And then after a certain number of weeks, things will start to slow down and the issues will start to be addressed uh, piece by piece, and then the stories will be more segmented. They'll, they'll focus on this particular thing going on and that particular thing, and um, every time some new information comes out, they'll be... Uh, but but the overall uh, coverage will still be pretty intense for well, a year or more, right? Um, with new stories breaking all the time. But because the vast majority of people in the world are able to follow this in real time, they are not going to have, um, it doesn't provide them the opportunity to get uh, really um, uh, overly paranoid or concerned as long as they're getting information. And it's truthful information. And there's more coming, then they will be focused on that, learning, 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 learning. Stephen, let me stop and, you there real uh, quick. We have we have a caller who just joined us. Uh, 313, you're live on Skywatchers Radio with Steve Bassett. Do uh, you have a question for Stephen? Uh, yes. Uh, how are you tonight? Doing fine. Thank uh, you for calling. Fine. Yeah. Uh, I, my question to you, Steve, is have, are you familiar with a researcher by the name of Art Campbell? Yes, I am. I've actually yes. talked to Art. That was him. Yes, I, what do you think of his research? I know he has, uh, he's claimed to have found anomalous metal and at the plains of St. Augustine, and, uh, you know, I just, mm. he, I, he has a new book out, but I haven't heard much about it, you know, on various... Well, he's one of many researchers that are looking into aspects of the history of this issue. He's also engaged some hard evidence, material stuff. Material evidence is extremely difficult to deal with, very difficult to develop. Uh, but he's also looked at the history of events that have taken place. Uh, he's been at it a long time. He's an old old guard guy, and uh, his work is appreciated. He's one of hundreds and hundreds that have been doing this for years. And collectively, they've, they've produced more than enough evidence to confirm the extraterrestrial presence many times over. And so they all have my respect. Is he one that you would think would be uh, that you could, that would be able to present some of that information if you if there are hearings? Um, don't know. I, I, I there will be the focus. The congressional hearing testimonies are going to be mostly focused on government political witnesses and agency witnesses. You work for the Air Force, Navy, Army, NASA. CIA, uh, or you were a former politician, uh, fly official, that type of thing, and you've got things to say about it. It's going to be really focused there. There might be some researchers uh, in the initial witnesses, possibly, limited number. Uh, later on, the particularly if disclosure takes place, you may see a broader range of witnesses brought in to testify before Congress. So it's hard to say. It's a very complex process. But, uh, again, I think I can say with confidence that uh, former members of the military, um, civilian agencies, public and political figures and officials will be the focus of witnesses in the initial stages. Okay, great. Well, I'd like to thank you for uh, being for your, for your courage in pursuing this, Steve. And I'm in your corner. I'm one of your supporters, so I'll keep You're on welcome. supporting you. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you very much. That's all for my call. Thank you for calling in. Okay, you're welcome. Take care. 
he, that gentleman right there represents, I think, a large part of the population, Stephen, where uh, we are ready, I think, for disclosure for the most part. I think, you know, if you poll, uh, and I know there's there's been polls done. I don't know how fairly accurate these polls are, but I think there's actually a better number of people that believe that we are ready for, you know, the full disclosure to happen than even the polls are telling us. Would you agree with that? I think I, it's a larger I, number. I have not seen a poll yet that I wish they would do it. Not seen a poll that's asked that very specific question. Hmm. Are you ready to learn from your government that you're not alone in the universe? No, actually, that's not strong enough. Are you ready to learn from your government that non human intelligence is already engaging you and the planet right now? Um, that's the question. Love to get the percentages on that. They haven't done it. Can't afford to con uh, commission that poll myself. Eventually, <laughs> that question will get asked. I, I think the answer will be very, very, very large number majority mm -hmm. of the U.S. will say that, all the developed world. I think where people might be most likely to be upset, and I mean upset to the point where it's, it's uh, potentially destructive, will be in the areas of the world where people are already upset. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, very unstable um, Yep. areas, failed states, this type of thing, where people are in a great deal of paranoia, considerable amount of difficulty. This is going to be one more thing that they have no idea what to do about. But And that's unfortunate, but they, remember, th these areas are already in trouble. And so uh, a little an another great unknown I don't think is going to be that much uh, different. Um, it's in the developed world where you have the highly sophisticated societies that have complex economies that need to be cruising along all the time, like a Mercedes Benz, or that you, or you get into trouble, where you don't, you definitely do not want to see significant disruption of um, uh, daily affairs. Uh, so, uh, but in that case, it, it just so happens that these same countries, the population has been. In, Exposed to so much information about the idea of extraterrestrials, about the 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 phenomena of UFOs, movies, films, and everything else, that they're just, I believe, not going to be overly stunned, curious, wanting to know information, wanting to know it quickly, but stunned to the point of not being able to function. No, no, no we're 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 more than ready in that regard. Do you think there might be any backlash uh, immediately from like certain religions or sort of religious groups? Because I know the Vatican has come forward saying they they accept the notion of aliens, but you think do you think there'll be an immediate backlash uh, post disclosure? I don't think so. I don't see why. Not a religious one, you would think? No. Well, first backlash. I mean, there might be there will be people of faith who reject the information. Because right. they find it troubling, but that's nothing unusual about that. It happens all the time. Uh, I don't think you'll you'll the formal um, the managers of relig formal religions are going to to get quickly out of line. I, I certainly don't think like the head of the Mormon Church or the Catholic Church or some of the Protestant faiths are going to somehow get completely. Um, discombobulated and start sending out edicts. I, I just don't see that. Um, the facts are what they are. Extra life in the universe, uh, other life in the universe is no longer uh, considered a paranormal possibility. It, it's a normal possibility. It hasn't been found out yet. They know that. Uh, yeah, now I know that people that believe that the Earth was created in 6,000 years, uh, would, would, this is not going to help them hold on to that might agitate them a little bit, uh, but that's not simply enough uh, segment of the population to be a serious matter. Uh, there's just no, there's no reason for religion to be profoundly concerned about the presence of extraterrestrials. Um, they may have to rethink some, some assumptions that they have. Uh, there may be some impact on some of their history. But the reason that people are religious doesn't really have any much to do at all with whether or not they're extraterrestrials or not. It's completely right. independent of that. 
Uh, it has to do with the the uh, the, the way that hu uh, human beings uh, cope with being sentient, self-aware animals mm. in a very complicated and often dangerous world with finite lifespans and so forth. Um, and having to cope with coming into this world knowing basically nothing and then spending your a good deal of your life learning a lot of things, which still ends up being a tiny, 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 tiny fraction of knowledge. I mean, we we all are born into a an ocean, and and we have to somehow figure out how to swim for 60, 70 years. It's not easy being human, and, and religion services that. Um, and people are going to continue to need uh, to have that as part of it. Uh, and there are still questions that the ETs are not going to be able to answer such as who made the universe, if it was made, right. what came before them. They don't right. answer to that. You know, um, it would be really, if, it they, would be if they did, I would be stunned. I mean, it's possible, but yeah. I seriously doubt it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they'll have So all again, religion answers. is not, you know, <laughs> there, there are other segments of society that are going to probably have more, more adjusting to do. Yeah, the oil true. and gas industry is more likely to have to do a lot more adjusting than the Catholic Church. Wouldn't it be ironic, though, if we find out at some point that we got our religious views from ETs, that they uh, somehow manipulated uh, religion in some way in our history to, to give it to us in a way, to give us religion, to give us these documents of faith? Uh, not only ironic, it's almost certain we're going to learn some connections between religious history right. and, and ETs. Um, at minimum, at minimum, uh, a number of ancient peoples confronted with the presence of extraterrestrials uh, essentially deified them, which was totally logical. Not a criticism intended at these ancient peoples. That's what we would have done if we were ancient people. Uh, and so over time, these deified ETs um, become part of a uh, a religious doctrinal structure, and that's a bit awkward, uh, and and I think that's going to be found out. But that doesn't mean that all of religion is somehow ET connected. Nor does it mean that the ETs were, were manipulating religion. It could be more of a fact that they're coming and going, they're doing what they're doing, and people are going, and and this is a natural um, uh, consequence of that. But. Uh, one could see how uh, advanced civilizations might use uh, the a, a, the context of of religion to direct uh, groups of people or uh, whole nations um, in certain directions. Uh, it would be tempting. Uh, and and if so, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, it's a very promising thing because when you look at the the instances where people point at possible intervention by religion into religion or into into, into the human human um, condition by quote giving messages or conveying. Uh, from the sky into the mind and so forth, messages. These messages, by and large, tend to be away from destruction, away from violence, and and uh, uh, toward uh, you know more more productive, more peaceful uh, endeavors. Um, in other words, moving the human uh, sentient humans. Uh, further away from their fundamental animalistic uh, nature, which goes back several million years, mm. and towards a society uh, which is um, more distant from that um, and less brutal, less violent, and so forth. Uh, so that would be an indicator that the extraterrestrials' intentions are good. Now, we're getting into some... some Significant speculation here, territory, speculative territory, uh, but just since we're freewheeling it, yeah. that, that would be a thought I would have. But the, the fact is, we do not know precisely, obviously, and we'll not know for a while, certainly not until after disclosure, 
and and after even contact, probably open contact with extraterrestrials, what the the long term historic connections are between the the scores and scores of religious threads in human societies and ET connections. Stephen, we're almost out of time here. Um, real quick, I have actually a question that they, they sent me on Facebook here, and I wanted to ask you. Uh, what are your thoughts are on um, on the possibility that once we are at the hearings, once we you know the, we get the government to actually admit some disclosure, if what they admit to is that it's not an alien connection from outer space, but uh, alien race from within the Earth, or maybe time travelers from the future, uh, would that be catastrophic, catastrophic, considering the type of news that is, uh, compared to it being aliens from just another world? Well, first of all, in terms of in terms of the 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 the, the activist uh, movement and the truth embargo and everything else, it doesn't really matter whether they're from another planet, another dimension, or from time. It's the same thing, really. And the extraterrestrial term is designed to include all that. Inner Earth would be a little different, um, meaning they've been here all along, so they're somehow already genetic, fully genetically connected to our biosphere. That would be a, a trickier, but i, I got to give you the odds of that are so tiny that it's just not something that I, I w w invest time in. I mean, there's, there's anything is possible, but the odds of that are just simply tiny. I mean, let's, let's start with the most logical and most <laughs> obvious, and that is other planetary systems and work from there. Um, but uh, in terms of the politics, in terms of what needs to be done, ending the truth embargo, uh, time travel, other dimensions, other planets, uh, this, uh, these are distinctions without a difference. Now, before we go, I'll mention that there's, this is going to be a strong year this year in many, many ways. And it's getting off quickly. Uh, there's going to be a very, very good Conscious Life Expo at the LAX Hilton again this year. This is going mm -hmm. to be February 7 to 9. Yep. Um, a lot of people are expected. We've got a lot of events planned. Many people are there's many speakers dealing with the ET issue. Uh, I'll be speaking. I'll be doing a workshop, and I'll be moderating a panel. And, and I can say this because they've announced it already uh, at George Norrie's event, 6 p.m. on Saturday, 6 7:30. Uh, it's a special event that he always has. Um, they have been gracious enough to uh, give me a lifetime achievement award, which George is going to present to me. Uh, and so I'd love some. Of People, friends, colleagues, whatever, come join us. That's February the eighth, uh, six to seven thirty, Saturday at the Conscious Life Expo. So that event's taking place, and then right after that, starting on the twelfth, twelfth to the sixteenth, uh, you've got the International UFO Congress conference in Fountain Hills, northwest of Phoenix. Uh, the probably now major, the major UFO conference in the country, UFO ET conference in the country. Looks to be very strong this year. I'll be speaking on the 12th. I'll be doing a panel on the 13th, and I'll be there the rest of the conference all the way through the 16th. All of these links are on my website, paradigmresearchgroup.org. They're in the uh, PRG updates, which I send out. I'm about to send another one out. PRG at paradigmresearchgroup.org is where you got to contact if you want to be on that subscriber list. Uh, so those are two significant conferences, and I have a list of all the other conferences coming up. Later in the year, there's quite a few, um, but this is a real strong start to the year. Um, Conscious Life Expo, LAX Hilton, Feb 7 to 9, and then the uh, IEFO Congress, Fountain Hills, Arizona, Feb 12 to 16. I'll be there for both of them. Very good. And also, citizenshearing.org. Make sure everybody check that page out also. And yeah, out that's the on. key site for the citizen hearing stuff, and, yeah. and you can get a glimpse of what we're going to be sending to Congress on the 31st of March. Good stuff. Uh, Stephen, my friend, thank you so much for uh, gracing us with your presence once again here on Skywatchers Radio, and look forward to having you on very soon again, my friend. Always, Angel. Take care, man. Have a great night. Bye.